We're counting down the 12 most iconic animated female villains in Disney history. Join me as we delve into the dark world of evil queens, cruel stepmothers, and cunning sorceresses. At number 12, we have Tay Ka from the movie Moana, 2016. In the movie, the demigod Maui steals the heart of Tay Fiti, which turns her into a scary monster made of fire and earth. She becomes super mad and attacks Maui, causing the heart to fall into the ocean. She also creates a sickness that kills plants and threatens to destroy all the food on the nearby islands. It's up to Maui and Moana to stop her before she destroys the whole world in her anger. Tay Ka might not be the most interesting Disney character, but she's a powerful force of nature. She shows what can happen if people keep taking from nature without thinking about the consequences. But there's hope because her anger can be calmed down. She's a unique villain compared to other Disney bad guys because she represents the raw and unstoppable power of nature. At number 11, we have Madame Mim from the movie The Sword in the Stone, 1963. In the movie, Madame Mim lives in a cottage in the forests of England. Unlike the good wizard Merlin, she uses her powers to make people miserable. She does this by playing tricky games that she always wins. Even though The Sword in the Stone isn't one of Disney's most popular movies, Madame Mim is one of the most memorable characters. Even though she's not in the movie for very long, Madame Mim stands out because of her crazy personality and magical powers. She's super confident in her abilities and loves showing off, especially when she's trying to beat Merlin. The wizard's duel between them at the end of the movie is one of Disney's best scenes, with amazing animation as they try to outdo each other by changing shapes. At number 10, Don Bellwether. The surprise twist villain of Zootopia, Don Bellwether works as the assistant to the mayor of Zootopia and uses her access to fabricate a conspiracy to take down the predators living in the city. Having been belittled and meandered as prey for all her life, she wants nothing more than to take the reins of power away from the predators and to rule over them with an iron grip. She attempts to do this by having the predators labeled as savages through the usage of a powerful drug, but her plans are soon discovered and stopped by the duo of Judy Hopps and Nick Wilde. Making great use of the classic trope of a small and innocuous character being a dastardly mastermind behind the scenes, Bellwether has easily become one of animation's most iconic modern villains. While she doesn't have as much time as a pure villain on screen due to being a twist villain, the stellar vocal performance from Jenny Slate makes every moment of her villainy stand out in the final act. Don Bellwether is the perfect encapsulation of powerful and dangerous villains coming in all shapes and sizes. At number 9, we have Madame Medusa from the movie The Rescuers, 1977. In the movie, Madame Medusa is obsessed with finding a giant diamond called the Devil's Eye, which is hidden in a well in Florida. Since she can't get it herself, she kidnaps a little girl named Penny to retrieve it for her. Madame Medusa was the last character created by the famous Disney animator Milt Call before he retired, and he put a lot of effort into making her look amazing. Her movements are super expressive, especially when she's interacting with her pet alligators, Brutus and Nero. The voice actress Geraldine Page does a great job with Medusa's character, switching between being loud and aggressive to fake sweet and nice. At number 8, we have the Queen of Hearts from the movie Alice in Wonderland, 1951. In the movie, the Queen of Hearts is the main bad guy in Wonderland. After Alice accidentally makes fun of her, the Queen becomes really angry and tries to catch Alice to cut off her head. She has an army of playing card knights who help her rule Wonderland with a lot of power, and she uses that power to get rid of anyone who gets in her way. Alice in Wonderland is full of creative and colorful characters, and the Queen of Hearts is one of the most memorable ones. Her red and black clothes make her look even more evil, and the bad things she does have a big impact on the viewers. The Queen is one of the most famous Disney villains because she is so mean and wants to hurt her enemies in really bad ways. At number 7, we have Mother Gothel from the movie Tangled, 2010. In the movie, Mother Gothel is an old woman who uses a magic flower to stay young and pretty. When the flower is used to save a queen, its powers go into her baby, Rapunzel. Gothel steals Rapunzel and hides her in a tower, lying to her about the world outside. 
As Rapunzel grows up, Gothel controls her by scaring her and sometimes acting nice. Gothel is an example of a mean parent because of how she treats Rapunzel. Even though she doesn't have powers, she controls Rapunzel by keeping her alone, making her scared, and sometimes being nice. She's like the evil stepmothers in old Disney movies, but more modern. The actress who voices Gothel does a great job making her sound both bossy and fake nice. At number 6, we have the evil queen from the movie Snow White and the Seven Dwarfs, 1937. In the movie, the evil queen looks into her magic mirror every day and asks who is the prettiest person. One day, the mirror says her stepdaughter, Snow White, is prettier, which makes the queen really angry. She tells a hunter to kill Snow White and bring back her heart, but when that doesn't work, she uses dark magic. The Evil Queen was the first big Disney villain in a movie, and other Disney villains have tried to be like her since then. Even though there are now many other Disney villains, the Evil Queen is still one of the most famous. She hates Snow White so much that she changes into an ugly disguise to try to kill her. This makes her a typical Disney villain who is jealous and mean. At number 5, we have Cruella de Vil from the movie 101 Dalmatians, 1961. In the movie, Cruella is an old friend of Anita. She tries to be friends again so she can get Anita and Roger's Dalmatian puppies. When Roger says no, Cruella gets mad and wants to get back at them. She sends two bad guys to steal the puppies so she can make a new fur coat. Even though other Disney villains want to rule the world, Cruella is just as mean because she only cares about looking good. Cruella is interesting because of how she acts. She's stylish and powerful, which makes her fun to watch, even though she's actually a bad person. Her love for fur is what makes her character in 101 Dalmatians. She wears a big coat that shows her personality. The red inside of the coat is like her hidden anger, which she tries to hide by acting friendly. At number 4, we have Isma from the movie The Emperor's New Groove, 2000. In the movie, Isma was Emperor Cusco's advisor since he was young. But Cusco didn't like that she was making decisions for him, so he fired her. This made Isma really mad, and she decided to kill him so she could be in charge. Isma is really funny because of how she talks with Cusco and her sidekick, Kronk. The Emperor's New Groove wasn't a huge hit when it came out, but Isma is now known as one of the funniest Disney villains. She has a skinny design that makes her facial expressions and physical comedy really exaggerated. The actress who voices her, Eartha Kitt, makes her sound like a loud and scary creature. Isma is also different from other villains because she uses potions and science in her plans. At number 3, we have Ursula from the movie The Little Mermaid, 1989. In the movie, Ursula lives inside a big sea creature's skeleton. She used to live in King Triton's palace but got kicked out because of her actions. When Ursula finds out that Princess Ariel really wants to go to the surface world, she comes up with a plan to get revenge on Triton and take over the ocean. She's smart and confident, so she tricks Ariel into making a deal that gives Ursula a lot of power. Ursula is a great example of a Disney villain who makes deals like a devil. In The Little Mermaid, she acts like a show-off, gaining trust by being nice and showing off her magic. Her song, Poor Unfortunate Soul, starts slow but gets really exciting, showing how she becomes one of Disney's most dramatic and memorable villains. At number 2, we have Lady Tremaine, also known as the Wicked Stepmother, from the movie Cinderella, 1950. In the movie, Lady Tremaine becomes Cinderella's stepmother after Cinderella's father dies. Instead of being nice to Cinderella, Lady Tremaine makes her work like a servant and treats her badly. When there's a royal ball, Lady Tremaine sees it as a chance to get one of her own daughters, Drizella or Anastasia, to marry the prince. Even though Lady Tremaine doesn't have any special powers, she's still one of the scariest Disney villains. The way Cinderella sees her makes her seem really scary. Lady Tremaine can make everyone quiet just by looking at them, and everything she says is important and mean. The animation and the voice acting by Eleanor Audley make her character even more powerful. At number 1, 
we have Maleficent from the movie Sleeping Beauty, 1959. In the movie, Maleficent, who calls herself the mistress of all evil, isn't invited to Princess Aurora's christening. To get revenge, she puts a curse on Aurora, saying she will die on her 16th birthday. The good fairies hide Aurora, and Maleficent spends 16 years trying to find them to make sure the curse happens. Maleficent has become one of the most famous and well-known Disney villains, even more than the movie Sleeping Beauty itself. Maleficent has everything that makes a great villain in a fairy tale. She acts with dignity and enjoys tormenting others by giving them hope and then taking it away. When she gets really angry, she shows her full power. In the movie's final part, she turns into a dragon, which is one of the most memorable moments for a Disney villain and shows how scary and powerful she is.